So before I start today's video, I just wanted to say that I am going to be changing the direction of this show and basically how it's going to go is I want to turn this more into a podcast style uh, show instead of a video show. Normally, I just sit in front of the camera and actually talk about the gaming news or the tech news, but I kind of want to transfer a little bit more closer to a podcast style uh, show where I sit behind the microphone and I just talk about the gaming news and the tech news and maybe whatever interests me uh, on the internet and I really do think this will fit the show uh, just as well as me sitting behind the camera and actually talking because I kind of like this way. I feel like my thoughts and opinions out there will be much more easier for me to concentrate or just talk about and then don't worry about this like style that I'm actually trying out because even though this is mostly audio only, I'm still going to have stuff popping up on camera or on video of course so whenever i talk about a news article i will show the article on screen so i still will do some type of editing it's not just going to be all uh audio only so you can kind of get an idea of what i'm actually pulling all my information from the sources and you can see the articles and things like that so you can read them or follow along as i'm actually talking about that now that i actually got that out of the way, I kind of want to start with this first article about the uh, the upcoming Samsung Galaxy Tab S7. Also, before I do that, actually, I kind of also want to talk about why I'm doing this. I'm primarily doing this because I think I got a brand new microphone or I did get a brand new microphone and I kind of want to test it out as well. And honestly, I just think it's much more easier for me to concentrate when I'm actually behind the microphone instead of behind a camera. I feel like maybe my thoughts and my opinions can flow a little bit nicer. But anyway, anyway, back to what I was actually saying. I was saying that uh, there are some more upcoming leaks and rumors about the upcoming Samsung Galaxy Tab S7. And it looks like this is going to be a pretty uh, nice tablet. And of course, Samsung is pretty much one of the last uh, manufacturers out there on the uh, on the market that actually still produces Android tablets. It's not like they're the only one. There are other options on the market when you actually think about uh, tablets or when you think about Android tablets specifically. But when it comes to the cream of the crop, Samsung is really the only last manufacturer. A lot of the manufacturers, like for instance, Google, no longer actually produce uh, Android tablets. The Android marketplace is just very dull when it comes to uh, Android tablet. So it is still pretty interesting that out of all the companies out there, Samsung's like, yeah, let's go ahead and make an Android tablet because uh, even though the Android market for uh, tablets is pretty much dead or dwindling down, they still want to support it and they still want to give it a chance. And I can't say that's a bad thing because tablets aren't necessarily bad and then on top of that there are some nice stuff android does outside of what the ipads can do in terms of the software since android's a much more open-ended uh open-ended os compared to what uh ios can actually do on their tablet line but basically the leaks for the upcoming tab s7 actually have two SKUs of the samsung galaxy tab s7 and apparently this one's going to be unveiled right around the corner it's actually going to be unveiled at the august unveiling i think when they unveil the uh, note 20 i want to say that's when they're actually going to unveil the uh, samsung galaxy tab s7 because we already had the tab s6 for about a year now so it is time that samsung actually updates their uh tab line if they want to continue on making android uh, tablets so it looks like we're going to have two SKUs of the tab s7 it's going to co come in a tab s7 which is pretty much the light version of the uh, tab s7 and then we're going to have the tab s7 plus i wouldn't really call the tab s7 a much more watered down version it's going to have slightly different specs maybe compared to the tab s7 plus but overall that's how they're really looking uh, to do this. And it's not really too surprising that they're going to have two different SKUs of it because just like Apple, just like other companies out there, Samsung is to know, is known to make variable SKUs of products, whether it's laptops, especially their smartphones or things like their tablets. They're known to do this, so it's not really too surprising. And they want to give different uh, choices to different customers, basing, basically basing it on their needs and what type of screen size they want. So let's talk about the specs here. So the Tab S7 is actually going to uh, is actually going to be the watered uh, down version. It looks like the, the Tab uh, S7 is going to have a, a small 11 inch screen, but if you compare it to the uh, 
to the uh, Tab S6 that's currently on the market. The Tab S6 is actually uh, only 10.5 inches, so this the small S Tab S7 is going to have an 11 inch screen, and the resolution of that is going to be. 2560 by 1600 and it's only going to be an lcd panel again you can see it's much more budget oriented and much more cheaper version of the uh, of the the tab uh, s7 plus and the s7 plus is actually going to be a little bit more bigger it's going to be a 12.4 inch device compared to 11 inches and then that's when you step up to the oled display of course and then then the resolution of that is going to be 2800 by 1752 that is going to also include a fingerprint san fingerprint uh, sensor it does look like both variants of the uh Galaxy Tab S7 are going to have 120 hertz that is nice if you do decide to go with uh, the the cheaper device or the smaller screen device you still will get that nice 120 hertz display and it is about time that Samsung did bump up the uh, refresh rate of their uh, Galaxy Tab line because I think this would be the first time on any Galaxy Tab that they are going to go with a, a higher refresh rate compared to a lower refresh rate. And when you compare it to things on the market like their smartphones or like the iPad Pro, for instance, you do get a nice refresh rate. So it is nice. They are going from your standard 60 hertz all the way up to 120. They could have even went with a uh, a hundred and a hundred and forty hertz but the thing is though i don't think for day-to-day -day usage and for most people it's really going to matter if you go from 120 to 140 or anything higher than 120 a lot of people can't notice the difference but i will say from personal experience and from personal use of uh modern day ipad pro it is nice to have that higher refresh rate not only is the ui going to be much more smoother less laggy you will be able to take advantage of it in certain applications like for instance uh maybe some games are going to be the biggest advantage of having a of having a higher refresh rate screen and that's where i really think that the 120 hertz uh refresh rate screen is really going to uh, be nice uh when you actually uh have this overall it really is uh, looking like the uh, tab s7 is going to be a pretty nice upgrade over what we currently have in the uh, tab s6 one of the biggest downsides to the tab s6 was the fact that the tab s6 had a small screen at 10.5 i mean to be honest 10.5 is no slouch of a screen that is still a pretty big screen but especially when you take in consideration what you can do with the uh, galaxy tab you can turn it into much more of a desktop or a laptop replacement just due to the fact that Samsung does uh, incorporate this system called DeX and if you don't know about DeX it's pretty much where you have a Windows or a Mac OS type situation on your tablet and with 10.5 I felt like that could be a little bit small if you're trying to get some real work done with a lot of windows open and things like that having that bigger screen maybe 11 inch or, or even 12.4 inch is going to be nice when you need to get some real work done and it looks like uh, also these are going to be uh, powered by Qualcomm's flagship, of course, Snapdragons, with Snapdragon been in the business for so long when it comes to mobile processors. Of course, you are going to get that 865 uh, plus processor, it looks like, again, when I talk about this stuff, there are always leaks and rumors, but at this time, the, the, the event is so close. Most of this is going to be uh, real information instead of just like maybe made up stuff. Most likely, this is going to be real since a lot of stuff already leaked. It looks like you'll be able to get this with uh, six gigs of RAM for the base model, and probably they'll have different uh, variants of this, not just a uh, six gig model. I can see them having like an eight gig, which I do think they have an eight gig already of the Tab S6, and it can even go higher. You will be getting 128 gigs of storage right out the gate, which is nice, especially when you're trying to make these, uh, for a lot of people, their only device, like a laptop replacement and things like that. It is nice to have as much storage as possible. Apparently, one of the craziest things about the Tab S7, it's supposed to incorporate some type of wireless DeX, meaning you don't need to plug in like a wire to like maybe your monitor or something if you wanted to use it, or for instance, maybe some application that used the wireless DeX. I'm not too sure about that, but that is something that is uh, very interesting to say the least. Overall, I can see the picture right here, and it looks like the Tab S6 is pretty much going to be kind of the same deal as the Tab S6 or the iPad Pro line, with pretty much minimal bezels. It's still going to have bezels on it, so it's not going to it's not going to be completely bezel-less. What I've loved, of course, a uh, bezel-less uh, design with this thing. Of course, I would love a bezel-less design of this thing, but maybe they couldn't do it, or maybe they didn't want to do it purposely so that in the future they'd have a, 
a reason for you to upgrade again after this tablet. But overall, this pretty much looks like it could be a very good device. And of course, it is obviously competing with Apple's iPad Pro line. It looks just like the iPad Pro and things like that. And overall, this is a very good uh, tablet. Honestly, I'm just very surprised, honestly, that Samsung is still supporting Android tablets as much as they have and as long as they have as well. Because as we speak again, Android tablets are pretty much a thing of the past. They don't make too many out there. A lot of the big companies who used to make uh, Android tablets once upon a time, of course, don't make Android tablets anymore. So it is very interesting that Samsung is still keeping up and they still want to compete with the likes of Apple in the uh, tablet space. But yes, a very looks like a very awesome product from Samsung. The only thing that we'll have to see is what is the price of this thing going to be. But I can assure since this is going to be a quality device from Samsung, it is going to be pretty expensive. It'll probably definitely be much more cheaper than what we're seeing with uh, Apple with the iPad Pro line. You know the iPad Pro line is pretty expensive. If you want the 12.9 inch version, you do have to pay a grand pretty much. And if you want the uh, 11 inch version, you do have to pay around 800. I can see maybe this one being a little bit more better than the Tab S6. I can see maybe the starting price for this thing maybe being seven to eight hundred dollars and then if you want the souped up one the tab s7 plus with the bigger screen and maybe of course also uh oled inside you may have to pay like eight or nine hundred dollars it could be but yeah overall this is looking like one heck of a tablet and of course if you want an android tablet there's going to be nothing else on the market sadly that's really going to compete with the galaxy tab s7 now that also uh the big key difference between this and other Android tablets is you will have DeX, and that is a big reason why you would buy this over any other Android tablet on the market. DeX is no joke, and you can kind of get some real work done with uh, DeX on uh, the Samsung Galaxy Tab. Next up on our list, let's actually talk about Power A because it looks like Power A is trying to make another uh, Nintendo Switch controller. I know the, the thing about the Nintendo Switch is a lot of third-party companies are really rushing to make all these different controllers for the Nintendo Switch. And honestly, I can't say anything bad about that because more options are always better. And the one thing I never liked about the Nintendo Switch controller, which I use the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller on a day-to-day -day basis, one thing I can say about that a tablet or that controller specifically is the fact that I was never really a big fan of the D-pad on that device, especially when you play games like Platformers or Tetris 99 on that thing. It's just not the best fit because just the way it rocks back and forth is not that good. And sometimes you do accidental presses you don't mean to on the uh, D-pad on the uh, Pro Controller. But besides that, the Pro Controller is a dream to actually play with. The only downside besides the D-pad being extremely unusable or not that good, I'm, I must be honest, when it comes to that controller is the fact that the controller is just way too expensive. I can see a lot of people looking for alternatives to the uh, official Switch Pro Controller from Nintendo. 70 I think it's $70 for that thing. I could be wrong. I don't think it's 80 I think it's 70 But for what it is, it still is a very... Uh, expensive device granted when you pay that $70 from first hand experience it is a dream a dream to actually use it feels solid in the hand everything feels right about it for me personally i can say it's one of my favorite controllers of all time yes i love the pro controller and i swear by the pro controller and the one thing you are going to be getting when you pay for the pro controller without a doubt is you'll have some of the best battery life you'll get on a, a modern day uh, gaming controller. I've never seen, honestly, any other gaming controller out there on the uh, market that has as good as battery as the uh, Pro Controller from Nintendo. It's just amazing for what it is, but it looks like Power A is gonna be making this brand new uh, controller, and the controller is gonna be a Pro Controller replacement. It pretty much mimics the Pro Controller. As I'm looking at it right here on screen, it pretty much looks exactly like a Pro Controller, and it looks very interesting. Obviously, are most likely, to be honest, it's not gonna be as good as a regular uh, Nintendo Switch uh, Pro Controller, just because usually third parties aren't allowed to make it as good, or they just end up not knowing how to manufacture their controller as good as the uh, official controllers by the actual company, but it does look like it's going to be a solid option to the Switch's official uh, Pro Controller. This one's going to be called, uh, it's supposed to be Powers, Power A's Nano Enhanced uh, 
smaller uh, Switch Pro controller. I don't know all the features of this, but it is actually going to include USB Type-C. It's always nice when these third-party companies include uh, USB Type-C because USB Type-C charges the Switch. Your smartphone charges uh, with a USB Type-C in some cases. Your laptop may charge with USB Type-C. A lot of devices basically charge uh, with USB Type-C, so it is going to be nice that this uh, Pro controller is going to be a option operating with uh, USB type C and that's something that is nice to see but most third parties now can support USB type C since USB type C is not that that expensive uh, to manufacture you're not going to be using something like the old uh, micro uh, USB port of course and it looks like it will support motion controls it will have LED lights and it looks like it won't actually support NFC for the amiibo that's the one big problem I have with a lot of third-party controllers, some of them actually feel really good to use, but the, the, the biggest downside you're going to be missing with a lot of third-party controllers compared to the official stuff from Nintendo is the fact that you may not get the same HD rumble. You may be missing uh, things like gyro control, which some games do use the gyro control or the NFC for the Amiibos. But for me, if all, of, if all this controller is missing is NFC, I personally don't care about that because I never, ever actually use things like NFC support on my actual uh, my Pro Controller or even my Joy-Cons since I don't really find the use of uh, the Amiibo, nor do I really buy the Amiibo for my game since I don't find the use of them. But for people who do find the use of the uh, Amiibos, it is going to be sad for that. But then again, you do have the Joy-Cons laying around if you want to use that anyway, so it's not that big a deal. And the nice thing about the Nano, I guess they're officially calling this controller just the Nano, like the, the iPod Nano. Uh, apparently, this is going to only cost you $49.99. So as long as this is a fairly good controller, I can see this being a very good option for a lot of people who don't want to pay that premium price of the uh, Nintendo Switch's Pro Controller because you take into consideration how much the games cost how much the system cost and everything adds up at the end of the day it does matter and even if you can save like 20 to 30 bucks at most it's still a savings at all especially if you're looking to buy extra controllers for maybe your friends and things like that who want to play on the same system it is always nice to get an alternative to what nintendo officially has usually the quality is a little bit less as good as something as the first party stuff but it's not that big a deal and yeah it looks like it's going to be a good controller again we'll have to wait and see when this thing officially comes out how good this is going to be when this thing actually comes out i don't think this thing's actually uh on the market as we speak it looks like this controller specifically i'm looking at another picture which i did not see before apparently this controller is actually going to officially support uh another trigger on the back you may have used some controllers like i think uh xbox's official elite controller and uh xbox's official elite controller is a very premium controller and it does actually have more buttons than what a normal controller can have and this one looks like it's going to be the same deal they are going to put another uh back button on the back of this thing so you have an extra trigger on the back if you need to map it to something which is actually uh, very cool and it looks like they also go on to show pictures of this thing compared to a regular uh Pro controller and it looks like this thing is actually a little bit smaller than an original uh, Pro controller and that may actually be a good thing just due to the fact that you may be able to put it in more bags and more situations you couldn't put the original uh, Pro controller so that is something to consider as well if you're a person that travels a lot with your switch you have the dock you have all the cables the switch then everything adds up and it is going to be very nice that this thing officially does uh or will be a little bit more smaller when you actually get that. Again, that does also kind of concern me as well because even though it is a little bit smaller and it could be a little bit more portable, that means you may be actually sacrificing some comfort and things like that at the end of the day because it may not be as shaped the same way or things like that when it actually comes to using this. But overall, it looks like it's going to be a very good controller. It also looks like the Power Ace controller will have a 20-hour battery life. Of course, that's not as good as the original Pro Controller from Nintendo that one I do know gets 40 hours and I can say it's an amazing battery I easily get uh, about two two weeks or three weeks out of the battery even if I play two or three hours a day the battery is absolutely phenomenal in that uh, system and uh, yeah overall a pretty uh, nice uh, controller from Power A I'm probably gonna have to check this one out when this thing officially uh, hits the market I think as far as I know 
this might actually already be out to be honest i'm trying to see if it's already out uh on the market it looks like you can maybe already buy it from uh, power a actually so i need to get on that get on that uh, bandwagon and actually try this because it looks like a good alternative to the switch's uh pro controller it doesn't look it doesn't look any all too different from uh, the regular Pro Controller. Now, the next one I have up for you guys is actually about that crazy big Nintendo leak that recently happened because there recently was a, a, a really big Nintendo leak. Most of these uh, leaks that, that have been coming out for Nintendo have actually been about older systems like the N64, the Super Nintendo, and things like that. And this is actually some pretty interesting stuff that has actually leaked about Nintendo. They're talking about some stuff like, for instance, Super Mario 64. Apparently, Super Mario 64 was supposed to have Luigi in it, but then for some reason, Luigi's not in there, but it's like in the source code they have, had in plan. Some other games were supposed to be coming out for the super nintendo like for instance there was a leak about zelda 3 and apparently zelda 3's code was actually turned into uh, mario kart 64 code which is actually a uh, very interesting that someone also found the source code for a uh, star fox 60 uh not star fox 64 excuse me they found a uh, source code for star fox 2 and that was a game i don't know if it was ever eventually released for the uh, super nintendo but i do know they did finally release it for the uh the Super Nintendo Mini, if you ever got the Super Nintendo Mini from uh, Nintendo a couple of years ago. And that is a pretty awesome game. And that is actually a very rare game as well. I do love... I'm actually very in, interested when any time a, a big leak like this actually comes out. Because that does mean a lot of times we can learn about past history of a company or better yet a lot of people can take this knowledge and actually work it into other games that are coming out maybe they learn some brand new source code material they learn different tricks these developers use they do a lot of different things by learning about these leaks that have come out and maybe it, it is nice to look at some of these leaks because then we can see stuff that we never seen before obviously and it's just nice as a whole because uh we learn stuff as gamers that what have could what may have could been or whatever you call it i know i'm like all over the place here but uh stuff that uh we never knew existed now we finally know about so it is pretty cool someone actually has a program uh for a star fox 2 it looks like the source code and it looks uh very interesting i do know the uh, Super Nintendo was one of the first, uh, or was the first, or was the system from Nintendo that did do blast processing. I do believe. I think blast processing, or maybe it wasn't blast processing. It might have been a for us for a F Zero. I forgot the name of it. Maybe it was blast processing. I can't remember, but yeah, that was some pretty uh, cool technology uh, for the time. But yeah, very interesting to see all this actually leak out. So they have a picture of a uh, of a. Uh, Yoshi's Island and then they have some other mock-ups here they have Bowser and they have some really weird characters a girl and they also have some type of a some type of like donkey or something like that just a, overall it's a very interesting very uh interesting pictures and this really show so shows us what this actually could have been I know there's not really too much information on this and honestly I have to keep it real with you guys I'm not really a person that's really too knowledgeable about like source code or about these leaks and rumors but it is interesting to at least talk about them and see different stuff that could have been going back I guess really quickly to that whole uh Super Mario 64 bit with Luigi I guess that technically did come true if you think about Luigi being in Super Mario 64 because you may remember or probably remember that Nintendo did re-release Super Mario 64 on the DS. Granted, it wasn't the best version of Super Mario 64 just because, of course, that system didn't actually have a functional uh, analog stick. So you didn't really have a way to control it as good as something like the uh, N64, of course. But they did actually add more characters to that game. I think you could play as Luigi. You could play as Wario. You can play as, like, Yoshi in that game. I think you did start out in Yoshi with that game so it was a very interesting uh, version of that game it wasn't just a port of that game on the DS they actually added a whole bunch of things to the DS version of that game that I would personally say made it the superior game I think they even added more stars uh, to the game but the biggest downside of course again was no analog support to that game but I guess 
they decided that they could have could have finally used Luigi in uh, Super Mario 64. Next up, we have a big, massive leak. Apparently, there is going to be, of course, just like every other year, another uh, Call of Duty game. And it looks like the next Call of Duty game could have actually leaked out to the actual public. And it looks like the next Call of Duty game may well, in fact, be another Call of Duty Black Ops game because we haven't had a Black Ops game in quite some time. I think, of course, last year we had... Uh, Modern Warfare uh, remake from the ground up. Not a remaster, but a brand new uh, Modern Warfare game. I think the year year before that was World War II or something like that. And then we had, had Infinity War or whatever the case may be, but we haven't actually had another Call of Duty. Actually, I take that back. Sorry about that. I was not really thinking to myself about Call of Duty all too much. I do apologize. We did have Call of Duty Black Ops 4, I think, the year before uh either modern war i think it was before modern warfare actually yes so two years ago we actually had uh black ops 4 so it would actually be very interesting to see that they are actually going back to uh black ops 4 if this is true again these are only rumors and speculations at this uh, very moment and i really do think there is a big possibility because i do know for a factor at least for me i love the the black ops uh the black ops series I know a lot of people loved it, and on top of that, I think it sold extremely well for uh, what it is, and I'm a big fan of it, like I said. I think it is actually the biggest series from Call of Duty that I played the most. I played Black Ops 1, I played Black Ops 2. I think I played Black Ops 2 more than any other one in the series. I played a lot of Black Ops 3. I never actually ended up buying a Black Ops 3, Black Ops 4, excuse me, just due to the fact that I think I was already getting kind of tired of the formula of Black Ops, uh, of Call of Duty at the, at that time. The nice thing about Black Ops 4 was it was the first time in Call of Duty's history they did remove the, uh, campaign and i know a lot of people were upset about that just due to the fact that if you take a look at black ops 4 black ops 4 did come out at 60 dollars so for the game to come out at 60 dollars and have no campaign was kind of weird but then again they did actually add a brand new mode a, a battle royale mode which battle royale is still a very big and very popular uh type of game in the gaming industry so that makes sense but to cut a whole mode out and just charge 60 dollars by adding a new mode out kind of was puzzling but it looks like there may be a another Call of Duty game, another uh, Black Ops game. And I, honestly, I'm all for that because I like the, I've always liked most of the Black, Op, Black Ops games that I did play and things like that. I'm definitely a bigger fan of that than I think the Modern Warfare series or any of the other series. I definitely don't like it when they take the games too realistic or not too realistic, but too uh, futuristic or too much in the future. I don't like things like jetpacks. I don't really like things like uh, running on walls and i think the majority of the fan base agrees with me because i remember one year at one of the e3s or one of the reveals for call of duty they're like nope we're gonna keep this game boots on the ground that might have been black ops yeah black ops 4 i think was the game that they decided to keep it uh boots on the ground because a lot of people just don't like the way call of duty functions in the air or with all these different running mechanics all these different jetpacks and thrusters and things like that i personally can say that does kind of ruin the experience and it's not the funnest because when you're shooting people in my opinion you have to look up in the sky you have to look everywhere and it can be kind of kind of frustrating you never know where someone's going to pop out and honestly i just don't think they're that fun uh, to use. Of course, these are only rumors and uh, speculations at this very time, so who really knows if this is going to be true, but someone apparently uh, found something on a Doritos label uh, for this uh, upcoming game, and apparently from this Doritos uh, from this Doritos logo right here that I'm going to be showing you on screen, it does look like they accidentally leaked it out, and it does say Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, so the official name is going to be Black Ops Cold War, and that is actually uh, very interesting. So it looks like they're going back into the uh, back into the uh, past, actually, not into the future. And I'm actually all for this again. I either like it modern or I like it uh, in the past. Actually, I'm okay with uh, fu having games in the future as long as they take the mechanics and actually do the mechanics right. So this is very interesting. I guess the thing is with Call of Duty, they realize that Black Ops is one of their best-selling franchises of all time for the Call of Duty series. They're like, let's just make sure uh, 
that we make another Black Ops game since so many people love the Black Ops game, me, myself included. So I'm very excited for this. And I actually hope this rumor is actually true. I know some people may not be happy about this just because, well, we've had too many Black Ops games and someone may want a new franchise from them or maybe they want a, a returning one that's never been having a second one because there are some Call of Duty uh, like franchises or Call of Duty games that never had a, a sequel to their name. Of course, there's a couple of them, but honestly for me, they can continue the Black Ops uh, games as much as they want since I like them all that much. And then there is actually uh, one more I wanted to talk about for today's episode. I actually wanted to talk about the uh, Xbox... Uh, the big Xbox Series uh, X reveal because we did get a big reveal for all the upcoming games for the Xbox Series X. And for the most part, for me personally, it was very underwhelming. It wasn't overwhelming. And for me, I really wasn't blown away by this uh, presentation. I know some people may have, but for me, I wasn't, wasn't blown away, at least when you compare it to the competition, the uh, PS5. And for me, I am a gamer that's all over the place, at least when it comes to Sony and Microsoft. Some years I buy PlayStation and some years I buy uh, Microsoft's Xbox, of course. It just depends on what type of games the actual system has. And it's kind of sad. It's looking like the uh, Xbox Series uh, X might be the same situation as the Xbox One, where I bought the Xbox One, but then I found, found out the games weren't really for me and I was better off suited with a PS4, so I ended up buying a PS4. Uh, same thing with the uh, Series X. It's looking like I may actually be leaning more towards the PS5 instead of the Series X. The last time I really enjoyed a Microsoft system was definitely the uh, 360. I loved Halo 3. I loved the Gear series. I loved Left 4 Dead. There was a whole bunch of other series I loved uh, on that actual system. Overall, that was my favorite system of all time, at least from uh, Microsoft. That was my favorite, and it's looking not too great for uh, Microsoft again for me personally. I guess the only saving grace that Microsoft does have for me is the fact that if I were to buy an Xbox, I could buy Games Pass. Granted, Games Pass, of course, is on PC now, but that would be a justification to buy the Series X so I can put it under my TV and then get Games Pass, which is very cheap, and get all the first party and uh, and some third party games uh, on that pass. And now let's actually talk about the big reveal. Of course, the big reveal for uh, the Xbox Series X, of course, was Halo Infinite, and we've been knowing we've been know, we've known about this game for a couple of E3s now, and it's finally time that we got a reveal. So we got a reveal of uh, Halo Infinite, and Halo Infinite is actually a very interesting game, to say the least. It's actually for me underwhelming. The reason it's underwhelming is the fact that when they actually showed this thing off, I've been looking at the trailer more and more, and the more I realize it, the more this game really does, doesn't does look all that impressive uh, to me. And a lot of people have been agreeing that this game doesn't look like a Series X game. The game overall looks okay. It does definitely feel like a Halo game. You get that from familiarity that you would get with uh, the other Halo games. I'm a big Halo fan. I played all the Halo games ever made. I love Halo. Halo is definitely my cup of tea. And this game looks just like more Halo with maybe new guns, a new area, and things like that. But the biggest thing is is those graphics, and a lot of people are up in arms about the graphics because they don't look like Series X graphics. They look like graphics you would get on current-gen stuff like the PS4 and the uh, Xbox One. And honestly, I must agree there. These graphics don't look good at all. But recently, um, uh, Microsoft did fire back on this and said, keep in mind, we're, you are actually watching an outdated uh an outdated build of Halo Infinite, and that really did uh, honestly puzzle me. Why are we watching an outdated version of Halo Infinite when uh, the Xbox Series X is literally only about three or four months away? It's coming out holiday 2020, so why is that the actual case? Honestly, that does boggle my mind, but apparently the reason we saw an outdated build of Halo Infinite is because they didn't actually have time to show us a better build of Halo Infinite. And a lot of things have been because, I guess, the whole pandemic going on in, this, in the world. And also, apparently, or they did confirm they were actually running this demo of Halo Infinite on a gaming PC rather than a uh, 
Xbox Series X, which is also kind of weird. But again, it all goes down to the pandemic. They said that they couldn't get everything ready in time for this presentation. So all they really could use is a gaming PC. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because from all the leaks and all the specs, the, that have came out about the Xbox Series X. The Series X is supposed to be a beast of a, a of a, a console, so you shouldn't have anything to worry about when it actually comes to gaming on the uh, Series X. I really do think this game will really uh will really shine on the Series X. You also have to keep in mind as well when you're watching these presentations online. The, the graphics will be different no matter what compared to what you're going to see in real life just due to the fact that you do have to realize again we are watching an older build of halo we were also not watching it directly on a tv with a system under our tv so things of course like uh frame rate resolution will be scaled down because you're watching it through the internet so of course internet videos or even live streams sometimes can have lesser quality because they do have to sacrifice quality for you to stream it through the internet and them streaming it to you so of course it's not going to be exactly the true 4k hdr experience you'd be getting on your actual uh, tv so that does make sense but even so it is still kind of disappointing that when we saw this thing it just wasn't for wasn't what we expected we thought it would be next generation and we thought it would blow us away but it really didn't blow us away so we'll have to wait and see on that apparently from what i heard on the internet there was a, a rumor floating around from a lot of people that said unfortunately halo uh, infinite is going to launch but it's not going to launch with that multiplayer that you love and that's the whole spirit of halo and i think that's why a lot of people play halo just for the multiplayer aspect itself me myself included i'm really only into the multiplayer of the game i'm not really into things like the single player granted the single player is good but it would have been a shame if this thing didn't launch with uh multiplayer and yeah it looks like this thing is actually gonna uh launch with a multiplayer aspect of this game it's not actually going to be a, a game that's not going to launch with multiplayer so that's great they did confirm i think that this thing's not going to come with a uh, ray tracing straight away you are going to get ray tracing in an, an update down the road i think and if that is true that's not actually a good so sign because this is supposed to be a first party title title from microsoft and these are games that you utilize the whole power of the system, the first party games rather than the third party games. So if this is a launch title and they're really trying to sell this Series X, what are they going to be doing if they're not going to be utilizing the whole power of the game by adding things like ray tracing in later uh, with this game, which does have me kind of concerned. On another hand, I'm kind of excited to see the direction they are taking uh, Halo Infinite or the next Halo just because uh, they did state that this one's going to be much more of an open world-esque game with maybe some RPG elements thrown into the mix. So that's actually going to be very interesting because for the longest time when you play the single player mostly, uh, Halo has always been that linear first person shooter whether you love it or hate it. And I do think in some ways it is time to actually evolve Halo. Why does Halo need to stick to its roots? Why does Halo need to be a game where it's always just a linear game where you just go through the story and then you call it a day? I mean that's why people love Halo. I will agree you don't necessarily necessarily need to change the type of game it is or the structure of the game just to try to please new people or maybe make the game less stale because people are used to the uh, structure of your game for me i think it is time for halo to kind of evolve i don't want it evolving too much because we already got things for instance like the borderland series we already got things like destiny and i don't want this truly becoming something like a borderlands or a destiny but to have things maybe like rpg elements maybe more customization maybe things like for instance uh more open worlds to explore or maybe different paths you can take around different areas instead of it being linear would be kind of cool because I guess they do have to try to make this game feel fresh because what are they doing with the gameplay and that's going from a person who watched this thing over and over and over and what I really realized was what is actually new in this game from what I seen from the actual trailer that they showed off at the reveal for the Series X a couple of days ago I really wasn't blown away by this game not just the graphics but the actual gameplay it just felt like more Halo and it looked like another Halo game even a lot of the weapons felt very familiar and very similar to what we've seen in other Halo games granted there probably was like one or two new weapons of course we did get the grappling hook and uh, things like that that are very new one thing I didn't even touch on speaking of this outdated build of Halo if you didn't look 
close enough at the Series X uh, video of uh, Halo Infinite. They did actually show it when they were driving around the Warthog when they went off like a cliff, I think. In the background, you can actually see some uh, texture pop in and texture pop in just shouldn't even be a thing, especially at a big reveal like this, which was very interesting just because they're trying to sell the Series X. And they also said that they're going to be eliminating texture pop in uh, with upcoming games. So that doesn't make any sense to me. Also, all this, all this uh, talk about games graphics, games performance, and things like that, I don't know all too much about, even though I can talk about it. If you really want to see an in-depth review of the actual Halo Infinite trailer. Uh, Digital Foundry did do a full complete breakdown of this game so you can kind of see why this thing was kind of underwhelming, why this thing didn't look as good as a lot of people expected to. It didn't really look like a next-gen game. They ha have all that so just go to uh, Digital Foundry and they make a whole video talking about that. So there it is right there and uh, yeah hopefully this thing turns out to be one heck of a game when this thing comes out. I think this game is going to come out on uh, also Xbox One. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure um, that Microsoft said somewhere that all current gen games for all next gen games, excuse me, for like the, the first two years do have to be backwards compatible. So I do think you will be able to play this thing on Xbox uh, One. Correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, I'm looking forward to Halo Infinite. But it, as we speak right now, the Series X is not looking like a system I'm blown away by, nor am I blown away by Halo, which is their big uh, first party IP, of course. And that's the reason why a lot of people buy the Xbox in the first place. I don't know if they still do that today, but for me, it's not blowing my socks off to where I would wanna buy this day one. They still have a lot to impress me. But the one big thing I wanna see out of the Halo Infinite, of course, is that multiplayer aspect since I spend 100% of my time with the multiplayer. Usually when I get Halos, I just jump straight into the multiplayer because the multiplayer, when it comes to a first person shooter, there's really been nothing like it. I love the precision about it. I love everything about Halo. Sure, there's been some hit or miss Halo games, but in general, I really do love uh, the uh, Halo uh, experience as a whole. I mean, when you can we compare all the games or compare it to other shooters on the market. Halo is definitely my cup of tea, so I'll be very interested in that. And yeah, I think that's pretty much gonna gonna call it call it an episode. Anyway, guys, this is Wayne from My Tech News signing out.